we offer customized, flexible nutritional counseling designed specifically for you. We work with diverse clientele, all different ages, different needs, and goals. Whether you are looking for fat loss, muscle gain, body composition shifts, improved health, performance, and endurance, we're here to help. All right, Anabolic Academy 8 with Big Danny Broadhurst. What's happening, Dan? Yep. Um, yeah, we had actually a full weekend. You are the winner of the uh, of the uh, Arnold Classic uh, prediction show that we did. So you'll be getting some stupid ass gifts in the mail, and you're gonna have to wear them on the next. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the... <laughs> uh, and I ho- and I would hope that in the future, when I win, that you yeah. guys come up with this, uh, the most stupid shit. That I have to wear or put on or whatever, you know. Gotcha. All right, um, all right. So we got a few questions. We're going to start off with the most obvious question, the one I got. This is uh, from uh, uh, a friend, a guy who follows me on Instagram. Also, I met him a few times at shows. His name is Tommy. Tommy, yes, Thomas. Uh, he wanted to know: Do we think that the top three at the Arnold Classic was fair? Uh, my opinion is that the top ten were perfect, spot on. That was, that's my opinion. That's exactly where I would have had him. What do you think? Yep, I totally agree. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I thought I thought it was, yeah, I thought it was spot on. Yeah, so and did yeah, I. I've heard a lot of complaints about Rami, um, not being the winner, and I, I can, you know, I can understand where people are coming from if they, you know, they like people like mass monsters, you know, and and you know that that's what they like and that's what they think bodybuilding that's what i like you know um but you know and to your average person you show them uh you know the lineup in in the 90s the late 90s the two that early 2000s uh, well i would say i would say uh mid, mid to late 90s they would say you know marcus roll wins or good right. 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 right um and you just your average person so you know the, your average person you know bodybuilding it kind of takes and I and, and those judges, you know, those judges have been judging shows for a really long time. Yeah, they know what they're doing. So, yeah, so you know, I, I think I think it was spot on. Yeah, me too. Anybody who knows bodybuilding well, I think you know it was close. But Sanson was, in my opinion, the the winner from the get go. I know it was very close, and I know it was a possibility that Nick would have taken it if Sanson didn't come in a little sharper the next day, which he did. But Samson pretty much had everything. I mean, he had shape, symmetry, balance. And you want to go out a mass monster, he was 297 on stage. Yep. You know, and um, his flow, uh, his X-frame, he had good enough conditioning. Yeah. Uh, um, but then, you know, a lot of people argue conditioning. And, you know, conditioning means you work the hardest. So then I guess they would argue Nick. Nick would should have won. And, and, you know, I can understand that, you know. But, um, yeah. you know. I could understand an argument for Nick winning. Yeah, I would I would still go with Samson, but I could understand that argument Nick winning because Nick's conditioning and and muscle mass is, is lights out, especially totally. from the especially from the back, you know, Crazy. from the back, from the back it's lights out. It's uh, yeah. it's when he stands next to guys that have just as much muscle and have that shape like Samson. Samson has you know he's a bigger version of Tony Freeman or Flex Wheeler or something like that, you know. With, uh, with with good conditioning, uh, and he has no flaws, you know. The guy, it's just, you know, when you put him next to that, it, it, it shows that uh, Nick is, is human. Nick is beatable because he's been in the zone since he turned pro. You know, he's been, I mean, I mean, everybody had him winning. I had him winning, and how could you not? Like, he came, won last year at the Arnold Classic, and he came in third at the Olympia. So, on paper, he's the obvious favorite. Yep. <clears throat> but He always you know, delivers. Yeah, it's something, it, things change, you know, things change from show to show all the time, you know, but anyway, all right, so let's uh, move on to the next question. This is from Doug Fruche. What is it about GH that causes joint pain? What do you think, Danny? Because I don't really get joint pain, not that I do a lot of GH. Yeah, but. I don't, I don't get joint pain. Um, uh, yeah, I think he said muscle cramping. I, was it muscle cramping or joint pain? Was it muscle cramping it, or joint pain? It, it was, um, sorry. 
muscle cramps. Sorry, muscle same, cramps. same deal, same, same vein. But but the I, I would say probably has something to do with the electrolyte imbalance from water retention. Mm. Okay, I had to guess. When I when I um when I use when I first like the first month of me using growth is I usually get lower back pumps, stiffness or pumps or pressure or whatever you want to call it. Um, And as far as in the gym, uh, as far as any kind of like discomfort, that's the only thing I really, I really experience. I know everybody's a little different, but I never got a muscle, I never got a muscle cramp and I never got a, uh, I never got a, what do you call it? A a joint, any joint pain from it. Yeah. Um, um, I mean the, the hands for sure. I've got a dream in the hand. That that's for sure. But is that um is that dose related? Because I I was under yeah. the impression that that was dose related. Yeah, I, I would guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I, side effects with any drug are probably dose related, right? Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah. like the higher you go up, the more you're going to get sides side effect. Um, but uh, yeah, I I I would say like when I first started, you know, taking like six units, eight units of growth. Um, I would get massive swollen ankles, swollen really? hands. Really? Yeah, really swollen. And um, so so I would have guessed that the cramping would just have something to do with the fact that your body's retaining so much water and it's messing up your electrolyte imbalance. Oh, I see. Right? Okay, because I only go up to about four units. But then again, you're all much bigger. Yeah, this, this was years, yeah, this was years ago, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, now, I, honestly, I don't notice anything from growth. I, I honestly, I haven't taken anything for months now. It's been about three months. So well, you've been hurt. You had uh, yeah. ankle surgery, right? Yeah. So well, I'll, it'll, be interesting. it'll be interesting to see what happens when I go back. But dude, it's going to uh, hit you like a ton of bricks. You think? <laughs> Absolutely, dude. You're going to yeah, blow I, up. I haven't felt anything for a long time. So from yeah, growth. So. And you're almost done, right? You're almost out of the woods when it comes to your ankle, right? Yeah, that'll be next April twenty first. I'm having the screws removed, so. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah. All right, very cool. Wait. Then you could get back to the gym. I'll be in New York. Really? Yeah, for you for the show. Oh, in May, May twentieth. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome, man. Yeah. We should hit, yeah. we should definitely hit the gym together. Yeah, we're coming. Oh, yeah. that's, that's awesome. All right, yeah, because I'm definitely going to the uh, the New York Pro, and we could go out with the with the ladies, and we could hit the gym together. It'll it'll be yeah. fun. We'll have a good totally. time. All right, cool. All right, next question. Um, I get asked this in the gym all the time, and the truth of the matter is I don't know the answer. But the question is, what causes trend call? And in, in my experience, I've used, I've used all three types of trend. I've used acetate, I've used an ante, and I've used the, the tri-trend. And it only happens to me when I use the acetate, but that might just be me. What do you think? I've had, I have no idea. Honestly, I've only had it probably twice. Yeah. And I think that I, I think, it's, I think the jury's, yeah, I think the jury's out on it. I don't think anybody really knows. I would I would have to assume that it would be, it would have something to do with nicking um, a vein, maybe, mm-hmm. and getting a little bit of oil into the bloodstream immediately, uh, like not the bloodstream, but in, into a vein. Okay. Maybe uh, I I, yeah. I don't know. Um, because yeah, that 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 would be my guess. Well, it was my experience something similar to yours because I like I've used all three different types, and acetate was the one that always gave me the cough. That always gave me the cough. I like can't, the- no, I literally have only had the cough like twice in my entire life. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So there I don't is- know, but I think it was probably acetate. Okay. Uh, I personally like the enantate the best. Um, yeah. because I get the same, looks like I get the same results and you don't have to pain yourself every other day. I don't really like taking fast acting stuff to begin with. Yeah. The try, the try trend, I, I, it, it makes you, you know, it's a combination of all three, right? Acetate and acetate and hex. And, um, I just, it makes you, it made, it always made me very strong, but I never got the trend results. If that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah. I, I like the parable on that, that trend hex. I think that's probably my favorite, which is the long, the longest acting, the half life is three weeks. Um, I feel like I don't get as much like mental side effects from it. Oh, that's but, actually. You no, know, I just I don't know. I'm I'm not a big. I don't really like trend, and, and I, I don't really rec. I don't really like using it unless it's like 
eight weeks out from a show. Yeah, I don't really use it much often either. That well, I've only used it when I was competing. So yeah, yeah. same same thing. I don't I don't compete anymore. That's for sure. So it uh, has too many side effects, and and they think there's better drugs you can use. Yeah, yeah, I know. I agree, especially if you just look into getting shape and look good and yeah. stay stay healthy. I totally agree. Yeah. All right. Our next question on a steroid cycle. What is a better anti estrogen to use, Arimidex or Novadex? Oh, on a steroid cycle, yeah, Novadex is pointless. So you, you have to use Arimidex or Aromacin or Letrozole, which would be the strongest. Um, uh, 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 Novadex is, is a CIRM, which is a selective estrogen receptor modulator. Mm. Um, Clomid is one, and Raloxifene is one. Raloxifene is the newest version of Novadex. Because Novadex, I believe, has some neurotoxicity. It's not good for your brain. Um, so really? raloxifene is, is the drug that, um, people recommend now. Like I would, I would recommend now for like a post cycle after you stop mm. taking, because you, that, at that point you're trying to block the receptor. Um, and, 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 and remember these drugs were created for, for breast cancer. Um, and they're for, for premenopausal women, premenopausal women are going to continue to produce estrogen. So they have to block the receptor in order to stop them from receiving the estrogen because they're not going to stop producing it. But postmenopausal women create estrogen via testosterone gets created in their adrenal, in their adrenal glands and the testosterone converts to estrogen. Mm. So, so they need to stop the conversion of estrogen, which is called aromatization. So, uh, that, so, so that's what, when you take testosterone, it aromatizes and converts to estrogen. So that's right. why you would want um, one of the, the, the aromatase inhibitors like mm. Arimidex, which is the first one they created, Letrozole, mm. which is the second. Arimidex and Letro were the first, and then Aromacin's the third. Okay. okay. And, 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 and Aromacin supposedly has um, a better uh, impact on, on lipid profiles. So it won't crash yeah. your HDL cholesterol as much, supposedly. But I, I don't, I personally like to use Arimidex because it works the best for me. Oh, yeah, me too, actually. I've always used uh, Arimidex. Yeah. And I've never really had a problem while I was using Arimidex. So, all right, two more questions, and then we are done for tonight. Uh, why in the early phases of growth hormone does it cause sleepiness? I think it always does. Um, okay. um, I mean, you know, your grow your body's growing and that makes you want to sleep. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I think babies, you know, what babies sleep, I don't know number, but probably, you know, 60% of the day and something right. like that, right? They sleep more yeah. than, than adults. That's for sure. They need right. more sleep. So, um, I think anytime you're, you're, you're especially to a, like high dosages of growth hormone, you're for sure going to be really tired. Right? Yeah. I usually get, I usually get go into deep sleeps when, um, the first month or so when I'm using, uh, growth, like, uh, like I said before, I have only go up to about four units and I, and I step it up. Like I start at one, two, three, and then get to four within like the first four weeks. And I notice that I get I deep sleeps, yeah. you know, uh, but then it kind of fades as time goes on, but I don't know if it's dose related. Yeah. I think I, cause I've, I've tried to go high, higher dosage of growth and, and I just couldn't tolerate it because of that. It just too, made me too sleepy. Yeah. No. And I don't drink caffeine either. So. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, that's my biggest problem, dude. Like, uh, there were times where we first started the pod, the bodybuilding podcast. Yeah. Like, I would take a, I get off of work at three, and I would take a pre workout before I go to the gym. Yeah. And then, and then I would, while we were doing the podcast, I don't know if you remember, but I would drink a, a Celsius, and I we always do the we always oh, do the recordings yeah. like at eight thirty at night, and then I was I wouldn't be able to sleep, and in my head I'm going, I don't get it, but like the pre workout I took at like three o'clock when I left work, it's got to be. And it was just the Celsius plus the pre workout. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I've been there to where my eye twitched. I would get that so bad, really? Yeah. I would drink so much caffeine, my eye would start twitching. Wow. Yeah. But I just, yeah, stay away from it. Yeah. I don't blame you. 
Um, all right, one more question, man. Um, why does DECA seem to heal or lubricate joint pain? Why? Yeah. Um, well, I, I, if I had to guess, I, I would say um, it once again has to do with water retention, right? Ah, uh, okay. That could be, no? yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you know. Because um, I, I tend to use DECA now that I'm older when I'm on a cycle. And I only use about between five and 600 milligrams a week, which is like pretty standard. And mm-hmm. I've noticed when I'm about four to six weeks into using DECA within my cycle, um, I've noticed I don't have much pain in my lower back anymore or my, or my elbows, you know, or yeah. even my, uh, even my uh, uh, tendons and ligaments, you know. Yeah. No, no, I, I for sure. People, people will do that and they'll even use it pre-contest. They'll add in like a little bit of NPP. Mm. Um, in order to, you know, so that, that way they can pull it out. And just because they're so dry, get ready to compete and their joints hurt so bad. I mean, I can think back of getting ready for a show and getting on the dip bar to do dips. And it's just like my, Oh my God, my elbows, it just feels like they're just like bone on bone grinding. Yeah. 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 That happens with wind a lot too. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It does. It happens with wind And is that the opposite because you're actually, uh, pulling the water. Yeah, I, I would assume that that, yeah. that it's it's yeah it's basically you know drying out your joints yeah. and everything, which cannot be very beneficial. I mean, e- even some corticosteroids, um, I c- ciprofloxacin, um, I know is actually implicated in a lot of torn tendons uh, and ligaments. Like uh, a lot of people who take that uh, have Achilles tears. Mm, okay. All right. So, and that's a corticosteroid, but I, I would right. assume it could have some some effects. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, yeah, I, I think I think that, that it dries everything out. But you know, by by that by that token, you would think that Dianabol would help with joint pain, and I don't know if anyone really ever uses that. Maybe because it's too toxic, but I, I don't. Yeah, DECA specifically seems like it yeah, has definitely. application, and I think some of the anti aging clinics even prescribe it for that. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I only use things that help now. Now that I'm 46 and I don't compete, so what I mean by help is like test DECA um, mm-hmm. and you know, low doses of growth. Really, that's about it. You know, it's not like when you're competing and you and, and there were certain drugs that I would use and I absolutely hated using them. I just yeah. hated it, but I would do it because of the contest. Uh, Winstrol was one of them. Clenbuterol was another one. Halitestin was another one. Halitestin made me a psychopath. Yeah, I absolutely like, hated it. What what happened? Trends like that. Really? Uh, I never really got that bad with trend, but that one time when I used Halitestin, it was like I hate trend. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. A lot. Some people love it. Some people, you know, the other things I, I've heard the same exact thing about DECA. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like some I, people give some anxiety attacks. DECA, really? Yep, yep. Yeah, I know trying to do anxiety attacks. Yeah, I never had that but, problem with DECA, but when I use the the halitestin, yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, some people get that, um, and they can't use DECA. Ah, so, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, at least you know, like. Um, I don't know if you if you saw this, but uh, this was maybe six months ago, eight months ago. Nathan Diasha was on desktop bodybuilding, and he said he loves trend. He, he, he would use it all year round if he could. Hmm. You know, which is the the first time I ever heard that. Most guy, most guy, you know, I'm surrounded by most guys that I go to the gym with. I'm surrounded by guys that are just kind of gym heads, and they're they're either one of two people. They're very cautious when they use something, or they're nuts yeah. and they use everything. Yeah. Right. There's like no balance in between. And I've always, the, and the majority of the guys are very cautious. And when they ask me my opinion, I usually tell them, you don't have to do anything, dude. Like, you know, you, nobody's put a gun to your head. You don't have to. Like, you know, well, I heard this is dangerous. I heard that is dangerous. I, they don't want to use trend. They don't want to use um, injections. They don't want to use uh, d ball because it's toxic. You know, they usually ask for like Anavar. And, and by that point, I just go, you know, why don't you, you don't have to. Like, you know, I don't know why you feel it necessary to use it. If you, if you're, if you're, 
very cautious or anxious or afraid to use it, don't use it, you know? Don't. Yeah, well, they get influenced. I, I had a guy come to me. This was like five years ago, maybe. And, and um, he came to me with a cycle. He was, he was in his 40s. He came to me with a cycle that a coach gave him. And um, it wasn't a big name coach or anything, but mm-hmm. it, it was like insane. It was like yeah. almost two grams to test, and then it had methyl trend in it. Well, explain what that is. Uh, trend is uh, well, it's methylated, so basically that makes it even more powerful, and it's an oral form of trend. Ah, okay. So, okay. Like uh, EQ is di- uh, is methylated, and then that creates dianabol. Ah, all right. So I did not yeah. Know that. So, so when you methylate something, it it, it I mean, yeah. amphetamine versus methamphetamine. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Good point. Very, very, very good point. Very you know, good one point. of them you don't sleep for fucking six hours. One of them you don't sleep for fucking four days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, good so, point. Good so point. It, it makes it strong, a lot stronger. So, um, yeah, it's just yeah. I mean, I've seen some crazy stuff. From regular guys in the gym, there was only a handful of guys that I've come across that didn't compete, and they were doing so much stuff. I'd be like, "Why are you doing all this?" You know. Yeah. And there was one particular guy who was in his sixties, and he was a house, and he was using growth and insulin, and like you said, two grams of test and and uh, Anavar and um, NPP, and it's like, holy shit, dude! Like, what's the yeah? You know, I, don't I mean, know. honestly, man. Uh, to be honest, we've talked about this before, but I, I don't, I don't think insulin's dangerous. I mean, I, I really don't. Okay. I, I, unless, unless you're like foolish, uh, you know. I think it's probably the safe. This out of all the drugs you could take, I think it's the safest thing you could take. Um, just it's just in, in the short term, it's dangerous. Mm. Okay, right. but is it is it like time sensitive? Meaning you got to know when to eat, when to take right, it, right? So right, so but forth. that's all. I mean, in the long run, you know, you let's say you just took insulin, and you didn't take steroids, you probably <laughs> and you knew how to take it. You know, you didn't do anything stupid. Mm-hmm. You, you'd be probably much better off. You would definitely be much better off health wise. <laughs> you know. Okay. Than, so yeah, but yeah, short term for sure, it's it's dangerous if you don't if you are unaware of what you're doing or right, right, right. You know. right. Okay. Yeah. All right, Danny, thank you very much for Anabolic Academy 8, edition 8. I really appreciate it. Well, I will see you again Wednesday night when we do ND Muscle Talk over on Muscular Development. And remember, guys, like and subscribe yep. to this brand-new bodybuilding channel series in Salinas Bodybuilding, and I'll be giving you great content coming up. All right, Danny, listen, brother, thank you very much, and we will definitely talk soon. Thank you. All right, sir.